Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Rising, this is your July 2020 video. We've got a lot to talk about. We're going to talk about five things. I got a cat with me. This is Taffy. Five things for the month of July for you, Capricorn. Taffy, say hello. Look at that. Oh, wow, you are special. Taffy showed up for you. That is an honor when the cat comes through and says, throws you a paw. Oh, whoa, she's destructing. Don't, where are you going, girly? Relax. Family, self, home, work. There's a whole lot of stuff going on. There's stress, there's tension. There's some ease that comes through. So let's dive into your five things. What is going to happen? Is there anything about your job, your body? Is there anything at all in your life where you can get some good news, a good piece of something to hold on to and say, yes, please, I need a good thing, something, anything to like ride through, to keep me carry, to just push me up, to elevate me. Capricorn, there's a whole lot of different things that are happening. So we're going to dive into this. We're going to look and we're going to see, and we're not going to forget the new moon. At this time for July, we have a new moon opposite of who you are. So this is fascinating because Capricorn Ascendant, that means Capricorn first house, your body, how you appear to the world, who you are, right? You're, you're the, it's the cover of the book. It's how you look. Opposite side is cancer energy. The cancer energy is in your seventh house. This is significant one-on-one -on -one relationship. Yes, we're talking marriage material relationship. <laughs> about July 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th. We have Mercury going direct. This is good because Mercury is in Cancer energy. Mercury is your thinking, you're communicating, you're talking, you're relating. Mercury is all about information, incoming, the news, social media, internet. You know, it's all this, my immediate environment, my community, it's my siblings, it's all of that. So when we look in your chart to figure out where does this happen in your life? Like, where is this energy floating around? Where is it working? It occurs. Okay, so this cancer energy is in your seventh house. So all of that that I just talked about in your seventh house means significant one-on-one -on -one relationships. So in other words, family, significant one-on-one -on -one relationships is your seventh house. You have cancer energy there. So this is mom. Like, I'm so close to my mom. She feels like my partner. This is that seventh house because you've got cancer there. Cancer is, you know, its ruler is the moon. So it's people from past lives who become partners in this life. So if you're married right now, likely you're married to someone who you are a partner with and who you had a relationship with, I'll say, who you have past life history with. And if you don't like that word, there's some connection you guys have. There's some, you can talk to each other, your ethnicity, there's links there in your ethnicity. How's that? You look back and you're like, oh my God, my family's from Croatia. Like there's these links to your history or, oh wow, my family's from Hungary or my family's from somewhere in Africa, right? So there's these links that you can hook up. There's these, there's these connections to our family's heritage. Mercury was thinking because that's what Mercury does. So with Mercury in that house, in the house of my significant one-on-one -on -one relationships, in the house and feeling about, okay, this is my family. Who is my family? Who do I need to have part of my family? Who am I realizing I don't want anymore as my family or I don't need anymore as my family? Because the sign of cancer is our emotional needs. It is what we need to have emotional security. It's all about centering in this sacred space. It's all about being emotionally secure. It's all about that, right? Which is the opposite of the Capricorn energy, right? The Capricorn energy is all about my material, tangible 3D security, right? You get it? So that's, that's astrology. It is the study of energies. It is the study of the polarity of energies and there's energetic cycles. Cycles as in, yes, you can look at a calendar and you can say, okay, this is going to be happening on this day because this is here. And this has this potentiality. Planets give us inclinations. We are under the influence of something when we talk about planets. So when we talk about Capricorn at one end being my material, my tangible, my physical security, Cancer is the opposite my emotional security. And this emotional security is seventh house stuff for you. And your seventh house cancer energy is my mom truly gives me security, right? My mom almost can feel like my partner. We're that close. And that's okay. 
that's okay. But what you do is you pick partners who in some way emotionally satisfy you. And they're likely going to be hookups from past lifetimes. And when I say hookups, I don't mean it doesn't have to be sexual at all. It can be people who you've had history with. And it can simply, you know, that can look a thousand different ways. All right. Yes, that was number five. Number four, Mercury being direct starts to think a little bit more clearly, not as muddied up as it was before, or not as emotional, but it's still in water. And the air, right? Because Mercury has wings. Mercury travels best through air. It flies. So when it's in water, it's still slowed down. So even though Mercury retrograde is over, there is still, we're still not as, we're still not as clear in our thoughts. We still feel sluggish in our thinking. And so unfortunately, this is still going to be with us until Mercury goes into Leo. All right. And so that's going to be a little bit more time. All right. We have the new moon, number two, the new moon. The new moon happens at 20 degrees of Cancer. Now this is going to be July 20th, there's a new moon. And this new moon, this new moon is all about securing, securing, securing what you need emotionally. This is what the new moon is about. So it's in your seventh house and so this is the place, this is the time to understand what you need in a partner, what you need from a partner to help establish your emotional security. The big picture of this, when we talk about cancer energy, is that we realize when we look at the small scope of it, it's here's my emotional security here, it's here's my physical emotional security because cancer represents home, right? My family, my tribe, my mom. Cancer also on a big scale is the public. If you have to be in the public, what do you need to feel stable? What do you need to feel secure? Some people don't like to be around the public. Some, for some people, it feels, doesn't feel good. For you, you would feel more comfortable one-on-one. -on -one. It's not saying you can't handle being in the public, but there's this depth that happens when you're one-on-one -on -one with somebody because that's that seventh house, right? There's this where a, a conveying of feelings and emotions gets comes through more clearly and it's easier to deal with that right one-on-one -on -one, right when you got to deal with a whole bunch of people and you're dealing with all these different emotions flooding in that's really difficult stuff it's not easy what makes it tricky is it's, it's not something you can see or even hear it's all about feeling right and so for many people because they're so sensitive which is what this would be a person with displacement cancer energy in the seventh house really sensitive because that's cancer energy sensitivities being very sensitive to the needs and to the emotions of your partner and so that's the kind of a person you would attract because that's going to be imperative for you a partner who can do that for you as well now the, the the second thing is understanding that we have friction coming in when we get to like the 25th from the 25th of july to the 30th we get this mercury mars squaring okay and they are butting heads right which fires up conversations which fires up our emotions mars is in aries energy you know, Mercury is like at 24 degrees in Cancer energy or 20 degrees in Cancer. And Mars, they're just squaring. And so Mars is fire and it's impulsive. Cancer energy is my thinking and my communication and water and it's but and it's water, which is also emotion. So Mars is passions. Cancer is emotions. So it gets these waters heated up. And that's people, sometimes people get hurt over stuff like that. When we're talking about what is my desire, what I want, my force, that's, that's Mars power. Remember, Mars is the fighter. Mars doesn't back down. So your Martian energy is in your fourth house. This is in your home. That's where Mars is. So Mars gets you fired up in the house. You want to initiate something in the home. You want to start something in the home. Channel that energy. Find a good way to create, to channel that power, to take it and, you know, Create in the home, right? Number two or number one. I, I lost track. There's so much shit that comes through at one time. But the cancer energy is this very, I'm feely, I'm touchy, my emotions are at bay here. And then at the same time, it's the talking, the thinking, the speaking. But then lo and behold, in comes Venus. Venus is coming in and she's having conversations with Neptune. Then Mercury starts having conversations with Neptune. All of a sudden, things that were really hot and combative have this suddenly this almost like this or can we have peace? Can we have a timeout? Well, what happens is there's some sort of deal or words that come through that sound lovely. 
that sounds super idealistic, almost angelic, and it can be that. It's a very, the energy is really good for creating. It's a really good creative vibe because it's so idealistic, it's almost unrealistic. So it's the energy where you want to take it and do something creative with it. Put that energy on canvas. Put that energy, you know, like if you go out in the garden, you know, create, garden, do something with it, hands on. It's got this really fiery power, fire force to it, but at the same time, it's like non-tangible. So it's that trick of how do you bring down that 5D energy? How do you how do you bring it down into the 3D? It's the balance of bringing the the non-material into the material and the raising the material up into the non-material. It's it's the weaving of the spiritual and the material energies. It's the weaving of those. And at times, it's very difficult. We get pulled in many directions. Your energy, the squares in your life overall in general, the friction, the tension for the next six months, this is number one. The next six months, it really is about your home and it's about your relationships. It's your home your family, yourself in your home and your family. It's about your significant one-on-one -on -one relationships and your family within those, with, with those significant one-on-one -on -one relationships within your family. And literally yourself, who you are physically. There's a tension and stress that's set up for the next six months. Now, if you end up having a really tough times, that means you probably, likely, most definitely had planets and certain significant points all in cardinal energy and cardinal wants to just go do 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 this is a very big time but i'm going to give you a nugget a nugget an extra a bonus i always love giving bonuses there's an extra bonus coming through right now for you because the new moon is at the opposite end of you because this is you over here right capricorn ascendant capricorn rising on the eastern side of that chart the opposite side the cancer new moon in your seventh house you have the potential, you have the potential at your fingertips to wish upon a star, so to speak. So on July 20th, you're going to make a prayer. You're going to speak an intention out to the universe. And you're going to say, this is what I need to have to feel emotional security. This is what I need to be, to have an established sense of inner peace. This is what I need in my life. And you're going to make that wish. We are birthing these wishes. We are birthing them. For some people, they're more disturbed by what's going on in the world. For some people, they're, feel, they're feeling it so very personally and they have devastation within their family. You know what's happening for you. You know on what level this is because you got cancer in your seventh house. So this is all about your significant one-on-one -on -one relationships. So your wish is going to be pinpointed on your significant one-on-one -on -one relationships. Marriage and business partnerships. What kind of a being will fit into that bucket for you? What kind of a person would you say, okay, I would consider building a family with this kind of person. This is what I need. And sometimes what we need isn't very clear. Sometimes we're more clear about what we don't need and that's okay. But this new moon, this new moon, and after Mercury did all of its retrograding and its rethinking about what do I need for a partner? What do I need to feel like this unity, this family, right? What do I need? And that's really what this is about. So on that day, I really, I'm, for everybody on this day, I really want us to have a day of me, 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 a day of taking care of self, taking care of me, saying, you know what? I just need this. I need this. I don't care what my responsibilities are at this time. Not to say you're just going to throw like, you know, the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak. No, we're not saying that. We never suggest that. Always balance. Always balance is, is the key to all the energies. But don't forget yourself. Don't forget to say, okay, before I take care of that, I need to do this. And this, this is you. You are the this, Capricorn. You need to make sure that you get this right in here. And once you get this right in here, once you know what you need in here, what's out there is going to come to you. And it's going to be what you want so that you can have a relationship where you feel emotionally satisfied. This one is important, Capricorn. Use it. Take it. Ride it. Use the energy. It's with you. The universe is basically giving you a gift. It's saying, 
It is your opportunity to wish upon a star. This is all about what am I willing to compromise for? Who am I willing to compromise for? Who gives me a sense of satisfaction? Who helps me sustain my beauty inside, my balance and my peace? Because at the end of the day, that's what it all comes down to. Peace, serenity, beauty, love, abundance, togetherness, family. Oh,